game. Um, and, you know, I, I think the one thing that Adam does a great job of is treating each game like an individual event and, you know, making the onus on the one game. And then we move, we, we, we move on, we win, win, lose, or draw. We move on the next week. We, we go on Monday and we evaluate what we've done. And we're Tuesday, the players are off, Wednesday, they're back, and it's, we're on to the next event. So, um, you know, not really a big change there. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of things we want to clean up from the last game, so that was addressed on Monday. And then when the players are back here on Wednesday, it's, it's right on to the next game and treat it like, again, treat it like an individual event. So I think that's really one of the things I've been impressed with him the most with Adam, that is, in terms of just uh, taking a week-by-week -week approach, not, not getting too far down the road, not looking back, not looking too far ahead, and so kind of treated the same way all the way through. So. What if I started singing that song that came on? That would have been interesting. <laughs> that would be actually interesting. Fine, um, yeah. What, what did Walt Aikens not do correctly on that personal foul when he, because it looked like he tried to come in? Yeah, I'm, um, and uh, you know, I, I can't criticize the uh, official, so I won't do that, but I did not necessarily agree with the call. So I'll just leave it at that. So I, I, I didn't think he did anything that was abnormal. Um, my reaction on the sideline probably uh, also backed up the fact that I didn't agree with the call. So uh, I'll get, I can tell you what the rule is. Okay. The rule, when the gunner goes out of bounds, uh, this podium was the, was the playing field. Uh, when the gunner goes out of bounds, you know, get, he, he can't go out of bounds on his own. If he goes out of bounds without being touched, it's a penalty. If he gets forced out of bounds by the jammers, okay, his angle on his re-entry re to the field has to, be a, has to be a straight line back onto the field. So at no point can he straighten out on the sideline. So he's got to take an angle which brings him back onto the field. That angle could be 5 yards, that angle could be 15 yards, that angle could be 30 yards, but that angle has to bring him back on the field. At any point, if he takes a step to straighten out and that step doesn't bring, is not bringing him back on the field, that's an unsportsmanlike conduct. It's a 15-yard penalty. The Patriots had gotten called earlier in the game what they call the four feet in the paint rule, which is when the jammer takes the gunner out of bounds. At that point, if they're both out of bounds, the jammer cannot make contact with the gunner. Okay. And they look, four feet in the paint means the, white, the big white stripe. The, 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 the official that's officiating that play is looking down the sideline. And if he sees the jammer make contact with the gunner and they both have both their feet in the paint, then it's a penalty. Mm -hmm. If the jammer is on the playing field in the green and the gunner's in the white, they can make contact. So their, their guy had gotten called for four feet in the paint, and then later on, as you know, we got called for, it was a illegal re-entry, which wasn't really pleased with the call, but regardless, that's what he got called for. Question for you. Do you instruct, obviously, is it strategy for jammers to put them out of the paint? Yeah, so, you know, obviously you have to go, obviously, the, the gunner, you know, if you have ever two gunners, some guys might both release outside, some guys might both release inside, and some guys might both just release in the direction of the punt. So everybody's different, meaning every team is different, or every rep could be different. Well, we, we have a technique for when the, when the gunner releases outside, an outside release we call it, to go out to start going outside. And, you know, a lot of teams are going to obviously at that point, we have a technique that we use with the jammers when that guy goes out of bounds. You know, we have this whole you know technique that we use at that point. Whether it's one guy on him or two guys on him, we have two totally different kind of ways that we play it. And most teams do because um, you have to be very careful with the rules there. It's, it's very, you know, you have to obviously make sure the jammer, once you get near the sideline, they have to make, make sure they stay on the field. If they end up out of bounds, they're going to get themselves back in the, on them because obviously they can't make contact, like I said before. So, yeah, there's a lot of technique. We spend a whole lot of time doing that. Uh, you see it a lot more with two jammers on one gunner than one-on-one. -on -one. Usually the one-on-ones don't end up out of bounds. Yeah. Sometimes they do. It, it, if the gunner lines up really close to the sideline, you'll see them maybe end up out of bounds. But a lot of times when a, when a gunner goes and lines up, and if I have two players, if I have two jammers, a lot of times they'll widen their alignment, you know, or they'll adjust their alignment, either tighten or widen it to give themselves more room either way. So it's a little bit of a cat and mouse there for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Never once. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe the no, told you. Yeah. Through the first no. quarter, the first qu uh, quarter of the season, how have the, any of the rules changes played out in, compared to your expectations? Yeah, so, you know, come starting the season, I really thought that, uh, you know, after looking at the play a lot through the preseason, I really felt like it was going to be a much more wide-open play. I think that's that's been the case. Um 
you know, there's, you know, a lot of those collisions, you're not seeing those big collisions happen in the back end of the play down by the returners, the off returners, so we call them. You're not seeing those big, you know, down the red zone area from the 20, and you're not seeing the big collisions anymore. You're seeing more of a much more wide open play. Every team should, handles it differently strategically. Some, some teams have a little bit more of a, a tendency maybe to stay in if the ball's in the end zone. You see, you can kind of tell where the returner lines up a lot of times. Some teams are going to do it situationally. That's more of a, what we do, more of a situational approach to the return game. Um, but I, I kind of believe, you know, I know the numbers are up a little bit. When, when there have been returns, the kickoff numbers are up a little bit because the play is a little bit more wide open. It's not as condensed. It's a little bit more of a, of a full field play. And so I, I think it's going pretty good. I, I don't know the exact numbers yet on the – I couldn't give you the exact numbers on the injury prevention stuff, which is obviously why the rules were put in place for player safety, number one. Um, but I think I, – I do think we're, we're heading in the right direction. I really believe that uh, – and I, I think as the season unfolds and gets down the road, as we know, obviously a lot of the teams playing colder weather, you're going to see more returns. And I really think there's going to be more big plays. And so usually what happens in the first quarter of the season, the touchback number is high. And then as the season goes on, that number comes down and down and down and down and down because you don't, you're not getting as many touchbacks in the colder weather games. The ball's not kicked as far. And so uh, it's harder to kick the touchbacks in, the, in that type of weather. So I think it's going to be a really interesting number to keep your eye on the rest of the season, and where how that kind of how that touchback number plays out. And I think towards the end of the season, in the colder weather part of the season, I think the kickoff return game is going to be even more interesting. Was the wind blowing differently in New England? It seemed like there was a little bit more line drive punts. Yeah, there was, it wasn't a really good punting day for either side. Um, certainly, you know what was happening was a little bit of a crosswind, and, and you know we got messed up with our drops a little bit. I know they did too. Their punt numbers weren't great on the day. The couple bad punts that we have were more related to the our drops. You know, our drop, you know, when you take the foot, you know, a lot, a lot of times when this is the football, when you're on, you're going in punts, when you're, you're kind of what people call them flip-flop or Aussie punts, you drop the ball nose down, and a lot, and the ball was getting pushed out by the wind a little bit, and that was kind of messing with our drops a little bit. It's not a flat drop. Our regular punts were actually better than our, we call them flip-flop punts, or our going in punts, plus 50 punts. Everybody's got a different name for it. Our regular punts were actually pretty good. Our flat drops were good. It was kind of messing with our nose down drops a little bit. The nose was coming out, and that's why Matt had a couple of shanks. So it's just, you know, something that's easily fixable. We got a, but it wasn't a very good punting day for either side for sure. Yeah, it was a little bit. It was so the crosswind, the wind that goes across the field messes with punters more than a, than a straight down the field, either at your back or in your face. They don't have as much problem with the drops. It's the crosswinds that kind of mess with their with their drop a little bit. So yeah, it's a very good question. It wasn't a very good punting day for us, and it wasn't for them either. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we worked on it. To be honest with you, he had a pretty good. He had a pretty good pregame. Um, it's a really good question. You know, going into it, uh, the wind did pick up a little bit. To be honest with you, you know, up in that stadium, that wind comes out of that open end, and it kind of comes in and, co- and goes back to that corner. So if you're looking at that open end, it kind of drives through that open end where that bridge is, and kind of goes into that corner, and that's where that crosswind was coming. As the game went on, the wind picked up a little bit, and it was kind of going. In, in the face there a little bit in the cross. So it was something we noticed pregame. It really wasn't a big deal pregame. And, but as the game went on, it became more of a factor. Just an interesting, one interesting note for that game, you know. You have to have to have like that. Yeah, for the most part, you know, we're going in, um, kind of have an idea. I mean, obviously, I've been, I've been fortunate to be around here long enough to, to be in all the stadiums that we're playing in and certainly open air ones. Um, and so you, there's, there's kind of a little bit of a, you know, a book, if you will, on each stadium. They don't always play out exactly. It depends on the day. You know, you, sometimes you get a day. and I mean, that, that obviously was one of our better days in New England weather-wise, but there still was a little bit of a tricky win, you know. So we kind of have a book going in, and then the kickers and punters are going to kind of play that out during the, during the pregame. You know, there's sometimes on one end the field goals can be a little trickier than the other in some stadiums. You know, Pittsburgh, for example, they had that, that one end of their stadium where there's a low, low field goal percentage on the open end, and then you go to the other end, it's – and it's a drastic difference. And so when you're going in, you kind of play that you know, and decide when you're going to take the wind, you know, the coin toss, the deferring, you know, which way you're going to kick, having the ball third quarter, fourth quarter. So all those things come into, come into play, and that's something that, you know, me and Coach Gates talk about a lot pregame and kind of where you want to end up at the end of the half or end of the game. And so those, those definitely factor in. Sure, and New England's one of those stadiums. What's the stadium? book on Paul Brown Stadium? On this stadium? I can't. I can't. Ask me on Monday. <laughs> I want to tip my hand on that one. Is there a stadium you say that's the best or most conducive to kick at? Mo- yeah, the ones that are closed. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are the ones that have no no wind at all. We had a funny. We had a, you know an interesting one in Dallas uh, about a brand new field to steal there. So it's got to be about five or six years ago, where they it's a closed stadium. 
but they open the they open the sides up and the end zones and there's like a venting system and all of a sudden we were no nothing in pregame and then all of a sudden there was like a ten mile an hour wind uh, going one way because they just all they did was open the the end zone there's like a there's like a window system that opens up and all of a sudden this wind is coming I'm like wait a minute there's no the roof is closed what's going on here and there was like a so with that some interesting interesting deals that way but yeah obviously it's much easier to kick on the in the indoors you know there's not a lot of every outdoor stadium especially the ones up north have a little bit of a you know trick to them you got to kind of figure them out and play them out and, and and our stadium to be honest with you is another one that before they put the roof on was there's a lot of kickers didn't really enjoy coming down here and especially some of the road you know road games uh, we had kind of have a field goal percentage book on every stadium you know there, every stadium we kind of have a we keep like a 10-year um, stat book on you know field goal percentages and things like that and our stadium was actually one of the lowest ones until you know we, it's it's made it a little bit different the the roof but it's still open air so it's it still could be some some trickiness in there as well all right appreciate it guys